What is going on everybody? Today in this video, I wanted to talk to you about the current state of full self-driving, my commute using full self-driving, and if you buy a Tesla and you purchase the full self-driving package on top of autopilot, can it drive you to work? So autopilot was supposed to be able to go coast to coast by the end of 2017 or so in that time frame, and it uh, didn't happen. Well, the date has been moved up to the end of 2020. So we're getting close. By the end of 2020, is our car gonna be able to take us from point A to point B with no interventions? So that kind of answers the question for you right off the bat. Autopilot today cannot take you all the way to work. You can't sleep on the way there. But you can do much, much less than you can do in any other car, especially when you get to the highway portion. But I'm gonna show you most of my commute today and what I do, where I use autopilot, how much, and we're gonna actually get a percentage of miles, uh, how much autopilot I use. So you can see here, I've already went 3.8 miles. The first uh, 2.4 miles for me are dirt roads. And so autopilot does not work there. You can use traffic aware cruise control where you're steering and the car is keeping speed. And using that, it will then stop at stop signs on the dirt roads or stop at T intersections. Uh, but I don't generally use it. I just drive myself for that portion. For the rest of the drive, Pretty much the whole thing I can keep autopilot on. The main thing these days that you have to do, you have to do turns. Autopilot can keep your speed, it can keep your lane, it can interact with traffic lights and stop signs. It can't hit roundabouts, I don't have any of those on my commute luckily. Uh, and it can't do turns, so that's like kind of the main thing that's left that Tesla needs to add in to this full self-driving software is turning. Once the car can make turns on its own, uh, we're gonna be pretty close to point A to point B with no interventions. Now, that doesn't mean the car is then full self-driving. Uh, it just means you have a chance to make it uh, without doing anything. Uh, you still have to pay attention. You most likely will still have to do some stuff. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Please hit like and get subscribed. I have a lot of videos of Tesla challenges uh, where I go on-ramp to off-ramp on the highway because the car can do pretty much everything on the highway. And I have many videos where I've done nothing at all. I get on the highway, I turn autopilot on, full self-driving, it's pretty much an interchangeable term, and the car does everything. I don't do any of it. Um, so let's check out today what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna try to do the minimum possible, and like I said, that's pretty much gonna be turns, uh, and that's probably it. So my commute is about 35 miles one way, and I will probably use my video footage to figure this out, but at the end, I'll put up a percentage of uh, how much was on autopilot versus off. I think it's probably gonna be north of 90%. Uh, somewhere around 90% of my usage is gonna be autopilot. All right, so coming up to our first stop sign here, the car tells you it's gonna stop. Uh, at this point, I usually take over the steering um, to get over to the right here, because I'm gonna turn right and throw on my turn signal. The car's not gonna do any of that. Uh, we have a lead car here to stop us. So the car would have stopped anyway, even if you had just the normal autopilot package, but my car just stopped at the stop sign. Um, here then, I tap the brake and I completely take over. So the car is not involved in this at all. Once I have room here, then I get onto this road and as soon as I can, right here, I will turn autopilot back on. Now the car can do my lane changes and everything for me here. Um, and so I'm not doing anything once again, besides paying attention of course. We'll count that as, as 0.1 miles I took over. Of course it was much less than that, just a small turn. Um, but just to round up so that autopilot is not getting the benefit of the doubt. So at this point, I still haven't done anything since making that turn. The car has done everything. We're coming up to this green light. If you have a lead car, uh, the Tesla full self-driving package will go through the green light. But since I don't, I have to either hit the stock to confirm that it's green and it's safe to go through, or I have to tap the pedal. Now here, I have to tap the pedal again, which I really shouldn't, but uh, I guess that truck was maybe too far ahead. So tapping the pedal or hitting the stock through those green lights allows the car to go through. Now at this one, because I had a lead car, you can see this line turned green. Uh, it took it a minute to turn green because the car couldn't see the traffic lights ahead, uh, I guess because this truck was in the way. I haven't really experienced that exact scenario too much. Um, but because I had a lead car, it saw a green light, it put a green line here and it went through. I did not confirm that at all. Now coming up to this left turn here, this is where I get on the highway. I'm gonna put my turn signal on. I'm taking over the steering, but the car is still doing the speed control. Um, so this is an autopilot. This is just traffic or cruise control, uh, but the car is doing this. And then the car, like I said, can't do turns, but sometimes it does turns. Um, so I usually like to turn autopilot on here and uh, see if it'll complete the turn. It does it maybe 50% of the time or so. 
All right, so here we go. I'm going to hit the accelerator to make sure the car goes. And it's still doing all of this, as you can see. And it almost hit the curb, but it didn't. <laughs> so great job. Uh, again, that's not really an advertised feature, but it does work sometimes. So I did not have to take over at all there. The car did all of that. Uh, and then getting onto the highway, it'll do all of this for you as well. It'll merge on, it's pretty good at it. Um, every once in a while, I'll need to take over, but for the most part, it handles it fine. And getting on here, it'll turn its turn signal on and it'll do all of this for us. All right, so now that we're on the highway, this is where autopilot really can show its stuff. It can do everything on the highway, pretty much interchanges, it'll pass slower cars. Uh, this is if you've bought the full self-driving package. If you have not, then you have to do your lane changes and everything, but it'll still do exactly what you're seeing here. It'll keep the lane and keep speed, so I'm really not doing anything. Traffic is going pretty fast today, so I'll keep up with them. Uh, and you can also see this is a newer feature, uh, really nice for making these videos for me. This is my backup camera, and then these are the two side repeater cameras. You can see each side of my car. Um, so you can check blind spots here if you want. Of course, you can use your mirrors or just look. And these are the same cameras that Autopilot is also using to see. So you can see exactly what Autopilot is seeing as you're driving. Now, when you get on the highway, um, like I said, it can do everything, but you may not always be comfortable with the decisions it wants to make. Um, so on a normal commute for me, I will usually take over maybe two or three times in about 25 miles of highway driving. Um, like I've said, I've had to see like that guy swerving in my lane. It was fine, he didn't get close to me, but I may have taken over, even though the car can avoid stuff like that. Um, but like I've said, I have made it to work, I mean, multiple times, I mean, it's gotta be a couple dozen times I've gone to work, uh, gotten on the highway and done absolutely nothing. The car has done everything until it exits the highway, I then take over. Um, I have videos of that and everything, which is very cool, uh, but it doesn't always work exactly how you want it. If you go into the settings here, in autopilot while you're driving. Uh, you can do this, of course, before you're driving. Um, but here's how I have it set up. This is pretty much how I always use it. Um, so the first one is navigate on autopilot, which you should always have enabled uh, because it'll tell you the directions of where you need to go as you go. Uh, this next one, speed-based lane changes, if you allow the car to make lane changes or it'll suggest them if you don't, this is kind of how uh, sensitive it is to changing lanes. So if I put it on mild, it's gonna let the guy in front of me go pretty slowly before it decides, all right, I'm gonna change lanes and pass him. If I put it on Mad Max, the person in front of me doesn't have to be going very slow at all, maybe one mile per hour less than me, and my car is gonna change lanes. The aggressiveness of the lane change doesn't change, but how often the car changes lanes changes with these options here. Uh, required confirmation, so I have this off, and with this now, I have to have a hand on the wheel. My hand has to be here. But if my hand is here and the car decides to change lanes, it'll turn the turn signal on for a little longer than I like, maybe four to six blinks, and then it will change lanes all on its own without me doing anything. If you have confirmation set to yes, the car will say, all right, let's change lanes here, and then you can hit the turn signal and say, all right, it's fine, you go ahead and do that. But the car is very good at checking its blind spot for you. I've never had it where it would try to change lanes if somebody was there. Uh, if, like in this scenario, this car would be red, once it's past me, then the car would finish its lane change. Uh, and then it'll notify you when it's gonna do it. I have it as a chime. Uh, it can vibrate the steering wheel, or you can do both. But this one, I find, feels a lot like road vibration, so it can be confusing. So you can see here, the car is doing this on its own. It's gonna change lanes, but I have people coming up in my blind spot. And so they, they sped up, and now they're not allowing me in. So I'm just gonna have to wait. Um, and it's a little bit annoying, but I'm gonna just, uh, for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna wait. Uh, it looks like, yeah, this guy in the red Jeep here, man, this view is awesome. He's gonna let us over. And there we go, the car is getting over. Uh, really nice, pretty tight gap there, uh, but the car did a great job. And this will allow us to go faster and pass that semi. So another lane change, uh, to go into the faster lane here. And that van came up pretty quick. The car waited for them to pass and then makes the move. Does a really good job of that. Now, like other, um, pretty much any cruise control, if you tap the brake, you completely take over. And that's the same here. So the car is steering and keeping speed. If I tap the brake, everything turns off. I'm back in control. If you want to go a little faster, so let's say I want to be a little closer to this guy, I can hit my accelerator, just like I am now, get a little closer, let off. Everything is still happening, uh, but I was having the car accelerate. I don't have to re-enable autopilot or anything like that. 
Now at this point, I want to move over, so I'm going to hit the turn signal, but the car is still doing that on its own. I'm still not doing it. And I did that because I know people are coming on the highway here and I want to be out of their way. Um, and the car uh, can handle that situation fine. It'll see them merging on and it'll slow down, but I'd rather just move out of the way than, than let them think I might be in their way. Well, here's an example of a car merging on. I'll let this play out just to show you how it handles it really well. So you can see, I mean, they got on at a pretty good speed, but they were dark gray. That means my car was tracking them. Uh, and now we're gonna change lanes. If you're ever getting kind of annoyed by the lane changes, uh, sometimes it's a little too much, honestly, because it's just so sensitive to the person in front of you going slower. And I get a lot of comments like, why are you in the left lane all the time? And that's part of the reason. Um, it's as simple as just clicking this button. Uh, now you're still in autopilot. You can still, if you have the full self-driving package, um, you can still hit the turn signal to make lane changes, but now the car won't do it. Um, it also won't suggest anything for your route, you know, which can be kind of annoying if you don't know where you're going. Um, but I'll often toggle this on and off when I'm in situations where I think the car's gonna change lanes and I don't want it to. Uh, that's a little trick you can use. So I don't know how many people have this, maybe a HOV lane or something. Um, if you have a solid line that you can pass, Autopilot will not do that. So this is another place where you need to do the steering for it. I really don't know how they're gonna do that one, but the green arrow here means this lane is drivable. So uh, I sometimes have to do that myself. So as we approach the end here, Autopilot will change lanes to follow route. It knows our exit is coming up. So we're approaching our exit here. Uh, so at this point, Autopilot can't do 100% of your drive but it can do most of it. So if I'm right, um, it's about 92%. Uh, I think about three miles, it's actually a little less than three miles. We're not using autopilot and my commute is about 35 or 36 miles to get there. So above 90% of your drive can be done for you by your car. Um, now you're still paying attention, you know, you still have your hand on the steering wheel um, and that may not be every day, but that is, uh, a typical day for me you know a couple lane changes maybe um, tell it to stop changing lanes and that's about it I, I do the turns I do that it's it's still doing all of this it'll take us all the way to the red light um, but usually I take over steering at this point because of it opens up so wide so um, I hope you enjoyed this if you have any questions leave them down below uh, one thing that I don't luckily right now have in my commute is construction it does handle that pretty well but again that's somewhere even if you're driving a normal car you want to be a little extra alert um, just in case but um, it does a good job of construction too. It can see the barrels, it can move away from the barrels, it can do all that kind of stuff. So if you're new to Tesla, new to autopilot, I hope you learned some stuff here. Um, it's, it's really awesome. I, I really love the, the full package, the full self-driving, the autopilot, and all of that. If there's anything I didn't cover that you have questions about, please leave them down below. I love talking to you guys down in the comments. Hope you enjoyed this one and you will see my car in the next video. So autopilot and I are happily driving along 